Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Verizon Communications. So $173.5 billion market cap on $304 billion enterprise value. Similar to AT&T, percentage-wise, not the most debt I've ever seen, but enterprise, the net debt is possibly the most. Let's see. So that's $130 billion. Oh, more than AT&T, but on a percentage basis, AT&T is high. Okay, so $130 billion of net debt here. I mean, I got to look at that now. 140.7 billion dollars in long-term debt. 10 billion short-term debt and only 2.6 billion in cash and cash equivalents. I mean, I just don't understand. I just don't understand this. That's 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 insane. I mean, even if I say it's a screaming deal, this debt is too much for me. I can't even it's crazy. The business itself, pretty good return on invested capital, probably averaging high single digits. It's likely in line with their weighted average cost of capital, maybe a little bit higher. So they're, they are creating business, which is great for them. But both operating and gross margins are down from 62.8% gross margin 10 years ago to 56.8. And then 26.5% operating margin 10 years ago down to 223 but they have been increasing their dividend very consistently, 2% a year over the last 10 years. Their free cash flow, I mean, 2021 was interesting. Uh, pretty big negative number there. But if you remove that and the lowest number, uh, basically the most recent two years, you're probably looking at about $18 billion in free cash flow. The thing that I hate is they are in so much debt in the last three years, issue a lot of debt, issue a lot of debt, issue a lot of debt. I mean, I just, I just can't understand this at all. I, I have no comprehension of this. It's, it's just, it just boggles my mind. So to me, I'm, it might be a quick video. I mean, I'm just going to cut it short. Let's, uh, let's look at some assumptions here and the debt numbers just, I, I can't, I can't even. So. Let's say that the company grows 2% a year, just under inflation, 15% return. Margins on earnings are way more consistent than free cash flow. I also hate that. I mean, a 2% bump to them has got to really hinder their ability. So about $150 billion in debt. That's going to be a $3 billion hit. And I mean, $3 billion to probably $18 billion. Free cash flow, not the biggest hit, but they just need their cash. Their debt is just out of this world crazy. Um, and they're just not paying it down at all. I, that's That just is mind-boggling to me. But let's do 14% on the cash flow, net income. Cash flow is going to be way farther down. Let's do maybe uh, 7%. What was the average? 8.9%. Yeah, I'm fine with that. This cash flow has just been consistently lower outside of these three years. And so I'm just not comfortable putting it any higher. They've issued just a little bit of shares. So I'll say a little bit more in shares and then dividend the same. Why not? Um, the payout is probably 55 to 65%. But I mean, in reality, I just, I would never buy this company until they focus on that debt payment. So I say never, I'm not going to buy the company until they would do that. And it was obviously a screaming deal for me. But for me right now, the company has to fall 41% before you get a 15% return given these assumptions. There's too much debt. I, I There's no portfolio that I would add this to just because I, I don't understand it. And I don't, if I don't understand, if I don't understand, I'm not gonna invest in it. When it starts making sense to me, when they start focusing their uh, capital allocation towards debt repayment, rather than just increasing debt from 10 years ago from 47.6 billion to 140.7 billion until they start focusing on the things that I'm focusing on. It's just a no for me because I mean, the people that run the business are going to do things that are extremely stupid sometimes. And I want the business to be in a great spot to, to where if a terrible management takes over, 
then it'll still be a great business. And right now, I'm just not convinced. So thanks. Another great answer, Dave.